Hello and welcome back to the note. We've had another relatively quiet day on world markets today, so I think it's a good time to try to step back and ask ourselves what is responsible capitalism? What is the goal of market capitalism? Now, John Taft, who is the head of RBC Wealth Management here in the US, has recently published a book called A Force for Good, which argues very clearly that capitalism can be a force for good, but that it will need to change to do so. I started our interview by asking him if this meant that capitalism needed to be about something more than economic growth. The financial services industry in the financial system, its role is to enable economic capitalism. Mm. And capitalism generates, as its primary and most important output, economic growth. Without growth, economic growth, nothing else is possible. But what we learned with the financial crisis is that we n don't want growth at any and all costs. We want growth married to other goals, like economic equality, income equality, like stability. We don't want the system blowing up, like intergenerational equity. No right. use growing if we bankrupt our children. And like sustainability, no use growing if we grade the planet to the point where life isn't sustainable. Okay, now who are the critical players? Plainly the idea <coughs> is that this, this change should be done by capitalists rather than being externally forced by politicians. Who are the critical players in this? Are we nowadays talking more about asset managers and less about bankers? Who, are, who in your opinion, are the critical actors within capitalism? One, one of the themes in the book is the growing importance of large asset owners in terms of transforming the economic system and changing the behavior of corporate and financial actors inside that system. So those large asset owners are sovereign wealth funds, pension funds, who own, if you will, the entire economic output of the world over long periods of time and have to take into account not only investment returns but externalities like impacts on the environment and so forth. But right. change also needs to come from regulators and political actors and change needs to come from within side the financial services industry which although it's made some strides still has a long way to go to getting back to the culture mission purpose and values that should underpin responsible finance. Okay now let's talk a little bit more about the concept of the universal owner. So the idea here is that because <coughs> in many cases they'll have many millions of beneficiaries. They're required to think in terms of the broader interest of the beneficiary and because they have a perpetual mandate, they, they, they're thinking in more than a human lifetime, they need to think in, in longer terms. Is, is that the point you're trying to make? And does, does that mean that these huge asset managers, huge asset owners rather, should behave more as owners? It is. There's a chapter in A Force for Good that is titled fiduciary capitalism. So these owners are fiduciaries. They have a long-term obligation to their constituencies, mm. which can be, in many cases, the people of a nation. Okay? Mm. And it's not just the people living today, it's people in future generations. The idea is they have an obligation to preserve the well-being of their constituencies over time. It doesn't do any good for them to invest in a way that maximizes investment returns, economic returns, if the investments they make end up degrading the environment to the, peop to the point where their, their constituents can no longer live, or creating huge disparities in wealth so that the fabric of the society that they're operating in is challenged. Those are externalities, and the point of long, the role of long-term asset owners is that they need to consider those factors alongside economic return factors when making investment decisions. And they need to invest in actors that are going to behave responsibly over long periods of time. Okay, that's a fascinating insight. So the growth of these big asset owners creates the possibility for a new kind of capitalism. Correct. And, and the other, there are flows of dollars now on their way to becoming just as important as the big owners are today, and they're coming from smaller individuals. 
retail investors are increasingly looking for investment strategies that have some kind of social return element. Over time, they are going to become as important as the large sovereign wealth funds and pension funds are today in affecting change in our economy and financial system. And one last uh, point on this is that when Barney Frank wrote the provision in the Dodd-Frank Act that gave the Securities and Exchange Commission the right but not the obligation to write this standard, he specifically said that commissions in and of themselves do not compromise a fiduciary standard. So writing the rule, he said, wasn't the intent to eliminate the commissions, but here's the detail. A fiduciary standard has never been written in a way that permits and allows commissions to be charged. Can it be? I'm one of those people who believe it can be through disclosure and client acceptance of conflicts.